Hello everybody. This is Dr. Carolyn Maria working as an assistant professor in Loyola College of Education, Chennai. The title of the course is Knowledge and Curriculum in which we are going to learn Unit 7 Principles of Curriculum Development. This is part 3 video lecture which is going to talk about the models of curriculum development. We will be focusing on Hilda Taba model and Taylor's model of curriculum development. The learner will be able to gain knowledge about Hilda Taba model and Taylor's model of curriculum development. What is curriculum development? Curriculum construction plus constantly updating the curriculum is what called as curriculum development. So whenever there is a societal need, curriculum has to be modified or revamped. So the basic curriculum should be updated. That is what called as curriculum development. Curriculum development is defined as a planned, purposeful, progressive, systematic process in order to create positive improvements in the educational system. It depends upon the societal needs, conditions, demands and aspirations of people. Let's focus on Hilda Thaba model of curriculum development. Hilda Thaba was an architect, a curriculum theorist, a curriculum reformer and a teacher educator. She published a book named Curriculum Development Theory and Practice in the year 1962. In that book she stated that there must be a specific order for creating the curriculum. She also recommended that teachers should participate in the development of curriculum. So two aspects she concentrated on. Number one, there should be a specific order while developing the curriculum or while constructing the curriculum and teachers should be part and parcel of curriculum development. She has recommended seven steps in the curriculum model. First of all, we need to diagnose the needs of the students. Let's have an example. For an example, group of students aspiring to become teachers. Okay, so first of all, we need to diagnose the needs of the students, whether there are any students who aspire to become teacher or not. So, after diagnosing the needs, the curriculum planner should check what are all the specific needs of the students. If you ask the student, they would say they wanted to become an inspiring teacher or an effective teacher. So, in order to make a student to become an inspiring teacher, what are all the points to be considered or what are all the inputs to be given? That is what called as formulation of objectives. So, based upon the needs of the students, the aims of the particular course or the learning outcomes of the particular course should be decided. Then, in order to make a student to become a teacher, what are all the content material we are going to select? So, that is the third part, that is selection of content. In order to meet the objectives of the students, what is the objective of the student? To become an efficient teacher or to become an inspiring teacher. So, you will have to collect what are all the content to be given, the methodology, micro-teaching, then behavior in, in relation to students' behavior, that is psychology, learning theories, assessment for learning, all these different subjects, what are the subjects to be given to make a student to become a teacher. After selecting the content, we need to organize the content in a sequential manner. So that organization should be from simple to complex, known to unknown, depends upon the maturity level of the students and depends upon the academic level of the students as well as with regard to the interest. So that is why in your B.E. course certain subjects are given, uh, concentrated in your first year and certain aspects are concentrated in your second year. So organizing the content in a sequential manner is the fourth step of the Hilda Taba model's curriculum development. So after organizing the content, we need to go and select the appropriate learning experiences. So this is, this is what called as teaching learning strategies. So here in your B.E. course, theoretical inputs are given through various papers as well as practical knowledge is also given to you people by, by making you to go for 
16 weeks of internship. So that is the learning experience each and every prospective teacher is getting. Through that learning experience which enables you to become an efficient as well as inspiring teacher. So selection of learning experience then organizing the learning experience depends upon the capacity and age of the students. So it depends upon your capacity you are sent to different schools for your internship. If you select, if you are confident enough to teach in English, you are sent to matriculation schools or government aided schools which are having English medium. And if you are comfortable teaching in your vernacular language, you are sent to schools which are teaching vernacular language through vernacular language. So according to the capacity of the students, the learning activities are organized. At last, at the year end, you are given an assessment. So, you are evaluated to check the efficiency of curriculum. So, the teacher education curriculum is given to the prospective teachers and at the end of the academic year, they are tested to check the efficiency of curriculum. So, these are the seven steps of Kilda Taba model. Diagnosis of needs, formulation of objectives, selection of content, organization of content, selection of learning experience, organization of learning experience, at last evaluation. You can have a memory technique as DFSOSOE. Dear friend, so, so, not an enemy. Have it in your mind like that so that you can write all these uh, side headings properly. I repeat, dear friend, so, so, not an enemy. Let's now discuss the strengths of Hilda Taba model. It gives the teacher a great role not by just making them to be the curriculum implementators, rather curriculum developers because Hilda Taba is stressing on the teachers to take part in the curriculum development. It uses the inductive method. What is the inductive method? from specific to general. When we are teaching some specific concept to some particular group of students, that can be generalized if the course has become efficient. For example, according to Hilda Taba model, uh, the curriculum is introduced. At the end, the curriculum is evaluated to check the efficiency of the curriculum. So, the curriculum is implemented to specific group of students and at the e end, Curriculum is evaluated to check the efficiency level of the curriculum. If the curriculum is efficient, it could be even given to the or it could be recommended to the public other group also. So that is called as inductive method. So specific to general and teacher approach is used and it recommends teachers that they should develop the curriculum since they are aware of the students needs because teachers are expected to go and analyze the students needs. That is the first step, diagnosis of the needs of the students and it sees the curriculum as a plan of learning. So systematically the curriculum is planned according to this Hilda Taba model and it gives importance to the objectives in order to establish the sense of purpose for deciding what to include and what to exclude and it could even emphasize on a pr proper curriculum. Let's now focus on the model of curriculum development according to Taylor. Taylor came up with the book in 1949, Basic Principles of Curriculum and Instruction. In that book, he has mentioned about Taylor's model of curriculum development. So, he has focused mainly on the objectives. Hilda Taba model was talking about a specific order and teacher's participation. But with regard to Taylor, he mainly focused on the educational objectives. So, this model is even otherwise called as means objective model. Four questions are repeatedly asked by Taylor. He asked, what is the objective of education? That is, what is the main aim of education or main purpose of education? What teaching learning experience that we have to provide in order to achieve the educational objective? First of all, we need to focus on or we need to identify the objective of education. Then, what are the teaching learning practices we need to provide in order to achieve the objective of education? How to effectively organize the educational experience? How can we know whether these objectives have achieved 
or how to evaluate. So based on these four questions, the model of Taylor's with regard to curriculum development is developed. Ralph Taylor was the one who has introduced this Taylor's model of curriculum development. So as I told you already, four questions. Number one, the first question is what is the objective of education? So that is called as the purpose of the school. The second question was what teaching learning experience that we need to provide in order to achieve the educational objective, which is the educational experiences related to the purpose. Then the next one is how to organize the educational experience. That is organization of the purpose. At last, in order to uh, check the effectiveness of the objectives, we need to go for evaluation experience. Let's learn one after the other. The first one is purpose of the school. It could not be even only the school, school or college, any educational institution. Or in general, you can even call it as purpose of education. So it comes under three phases. First of all, we need to identify the general instructional objective of the students. And that could be done by, from the subject matter, whatever subject matter we are giving to the students. And who are the learners from which society they, ha they hail from all these matters while identifying the general instructional objectives. Then after identifying the general instructional objective, we need to refine the objectives in two ways according to the philosophy of the school and psychology of learning. Philosophy of the school is each and every school has their own style of teaching. For example, they may conduct unit test, slip test, or some schools may have only quarterly, half yearly, annual examination. Some schools may teach through technology enabled, smart classroom, smart board, or even reflective teaching and all that. Some classroom, some schools may have lecture method, chalk and talk method. So these are the different philosophies of different schools. What are the different principles are followed in each school? Then after psychology of learning, it depends upon the behavioral change of the students. How far the students are enthusiastic to learn particular subject. Then at last, the third phase is identify the specific instructional objective. So according to Taylor, a teacher should identify the general instructional objective and specific instructional objective based upon the philosophy of the school and psychology of the learner depend upon the society from where the student hail. Then Ralph Taylor has asked the other four uh, aspects are educational experience should be related to the purpose. So we are expected to identify the appropriate learning experiences which will enable the learners to attain the instruction objectives. As I told you already in the very first uh, purpose we are identifying the general instructional objective and specific instructional objective of a particular course. So in order to achieve or in order to meet these uh, general and specific instructional objective, what are the learning experiences we are formulating? Then after identifying the learning experience or teaching learning methodologies, we need to organize the learning experiences. So organize our ideas, concepts, values, skills, etc. to maximize the meaningful learning. So after giving uh, the teaching learning experience to the students, we need to go for an evaluation. So through that evaluation, we'll come to know the learning outcome as well as the efficiency of the curriculum. So it also guides the teacher whether the curriculum can be maintained as it is or it could be modified. Let's discuss on the merits and demerits of Taylor's model. First of all, Clarity about general and specific instructional objectives should be done by the teacher. So that is the merit. If the teacher undergoes for a strenuous process of identifying the general and specific instructional objective, the teachers may have the clarity. And the objectives should specify how students are to behave at the end of the particular unit. So that is the learning outcome. So teachers are expected to, first of all, identify the general and specific instructional objective as well as the learning outcome. 
there are some demerits here if the teachers have not undergone for a proper purpose of or proper uh, process of identifying the general instructional objective or specific instructional objective they won't be able to answer the enquiries about the aims and objectives of their teaching program they may have some confusion between general and specific instructional objectives key learnings are teachers play a vital role in the curriculum development teachers should be clear about the objectives of teaching expected learning outcome should be the overall development of the students let me ask you two questions for you to reflect on as a teacher are you clear about the general instructional objectives and the specific instructional objectives for the lessons you teach just check then what are your suggestions to help a teacher in the process of curriculum development these are some of the books for your further reading thank you for listening students wish you all good luck